morning welcome to the first lecture of applied multivariate statistical modeling let me tell you the content of this today's presentation so we'll start with introduction then variables data types data sources models and modeling followed by principles of modeling statistical approaches to model building multivariate models some illustrative examples three cases followed by references the entire content will be covered in two hours today i will try to finish up to principles of modeling let us start with defining what is applied multivariate statistical modeling applied multivariate statistical modeling so let us define word by word first is applied now what do we mean by applied in science there is pure science and applied science pure science we generally understand which is basic science which is basically talks about laws theories and their development and their development definitely it links with the phenomena which which we usually observe in different aspects of our life now applied science actually uses the knowledge of the pure science and develop something for the benefit of the mankind so applied science one of the one of the benefit we can say then when you talk about engineering engineering it is basically applied now when i talk about applied statistics what do we mean i am assuming that you have knowledge on preliminary basic statistics for example normal distribution if you know normal distribution then then also you know the <coughs> probability density function fx which is 1 by root over 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus of x minus mu by sigma square where x varies from minus infinity to plus infinity now this is the so called uh, this bell shaped curve which is developed by carl frederick 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 f r e d e r i c h frederick goss the theoretical development so there have been development of this type of distributions this is it is coming under basics now suppose if i want to apply this knowledge to a real life situation i can find out a situation like this for example let us there are three processes process a b and c take certain inputs convert into value added outputs value added outputs all cases let there are basically three identical machines which is producing steel washers steel washers will be shaped like this where there is inner diameter id there is outer diameter 
O D as well as there will be certain thickness of this washer. So, I can say T H. Now, if you produce a large amount of steel washers that means, the number of items produced is large n is large then the suppose the quality characteristics or the characteristics of the steel water which is of important to the people the customer this is id if you plot you may get this type of distribution which is normally distributed and where you will be getting mean here and there will be definitely standard deviation for id similarly for od similarly for thickness now then what you are doing by what is applied here a production process a for example in this case which is producing steel washers is is converted into a statistical process in the sense in terms of a distribution like normal distribution where we are saying that that the production process can be interpreted the behavior of this project can be interpreted like this. Now, in order to get it further clarified if we do like this suppose this one is for A production process A and if I say this is for production process B and third one is this one for production process C. then using these things you will be able to compare compare a b and c is their performance in terms of mean and standard deviation there is possibility also to see that whether the mean id produced by c is equal to that of b b or a this type of comparisons and other things possible so when we actually when we, we, we develop something which will be useful to the society for the mankind then we say it is applied. So, now come to the second uh, second uh, word which is basically multivariate. Now, in order to understand multivariate you have to understand what is variable. I think it is known to you that variable is something which takes different values that since I can say takes different values. For example, if I say I d x is I d in a diameter then if I produced one item I stands for the item suppose first item and the id value it may take value x 1. When you go for second washer then it may take x 2. So, if I such way if I go for n washers produced that x n will come into consideration. So, these are the values. So, i d takes different values so, as a result i d is here variable. Now, in statistics we basically talk about two type of may, two types of variable one is fixed variable another one is deterministic uh, sorry uh, random variable. So, fixed other way we can say deterministic deterministic and random we can say probabilistic. For example, if I create another variable which is month, it varies over year, so, but we know all the months suppose uh, what will be the next month if this month is your uh, December, next month will be January it is known with certainty. So, it is a deterministic one, but in this case when you are you are going to produce the second lot suppose in the second lot even, even in one lot what is the value of i d for the second item or second washer it is not known with certainty. It is governed through probabilistic distribution. So, so that sense uh, that is it is a random one 
we do not know the value exactly and this value is coming based on certain random experiment in this case the process which is producing this this item. So, <coughs> so uh, if I if I go on saying like this then other variable here is O D similarly other one is our thickness. Now, in order to accommodate more than uh, one variable we will write this x 1 is i d, x 2 is o d and x 3 is x 1, x 2 and x 3 is thickness. Then the for the first of first item was, was produced then this will be x 1 1, second one x 2 1 and n 1. Similarly, for o d x 1 2, x 2 2 like x n 2 and if I go for the x 3 variable that is observe for first observation it is x 1 3, second one x 2 3. So, like this x n 3. So, what we are trying to say here that we are considering three variables x 1, x 2, x 3 which are nothing but the characteristics of the steel washers in this example which has inner diameter, which has outer diameter, which has thickness values. Now, if you produced n number of washers, then what will happen? Every washers will be will be having uh, different values for I D, O D, and thickness. Okay. So this is my observation. Num first one is observation uh, number one. Second one observation number two. Like uh, there is observation number n and you see in observation number 1 if I consider only I d that value is x 1 1 if I consider all 3 together the value is observation 1 takes values x 1 1 x 1 2 x 1 3. Okay. So, similarly if you go on increasing the number of variables up to x p then here it will be x 1 p x 2 p like this x n p. Now, each of these, these, these as well as these, these are, these are observations on multiple variables, observation on multiple variables. What we want to define here? We want to define here multivariate. Okay. So, in order to do so, we know variable deterministic variable probabilistic that is random variable and this is the this is one example where every observation is measured on several variables. Then, then when multiple variables come into picture, then each observation is a variable vector. For example, if I take the ith observation here then x i will be x i 1, x i 2 like this x i p. So, it is a it is it is a variable vector that is ith observation on p variables. So, when we deal with this type of situation where our observations or each of the observations have multiple values, each of the observations has a multiple values in the sense values on multiple number of variables more than one, then the situation is multivariate situation. Multivariate situation. Now, we define variable, we define multivariate situation. Let us understand what is variate then. Getting me? So, instead of saying that x i is like this, if I create something different based on all those observations that there is linear combination combination of variables 
for example, here in this uh, in our example there are three variable x 1, x 2 and x 3. If I create a combination linear combination L c which is beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3. So, this combiningly will give give a quantity or a value or other way we can also say a variable which is we are saying linear combination of variable which talk which is variate this is variate. And then what is the definition of variate linear combination of variables with empirically determined weights. So, that means, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 will be determined based on observations. There are n observations. So, we will be able to determine all those values. So, linear combination of or weighted linear combination of variables where the weights are determined empirically that is variate. Now, in, in this case you can go for one variable simple one variable that means, if I say there are p variables we are going for one variable p equal to 1 then that will be univariate when we go for p equal to greater than equal to 2 that is multivariate that is what multivariate. Okay. Usually, in statistics books, you will be finding univariate statistics. For example, in terms of normal distribution, univariate normal distribution, bivariate normal distribution, multivariate normal distribution. So, although bivariate is a part of multivariate, we basically talk about when univariate mean p equal to 1, bivariate mean p equal to 2, multivariate is p greater than equal to so, this is what is multivariate. By word multivariate, we definitely talk something about linear combination of variables where more than one variable is there and there are multiple observations, not a single observation, n number of observations and weights will be determined empirically based on the observations, n observation that will be collected from um, the population where for which we want to infer something all those inference other things will be discussed later one ok. So, <coughs> third one the third uh, issue is statistical. Now, what is statistical? Statistical by statistical uh, we want to we want to say that it is basically using statistics using statistics that is what I we want to infer. So, whatever you are developing something using the statistical tools and techniques, then this development is statistical development. Okay. Now, what is statistics if I say that statistics is nothing but collecting, then organizing, then analyzing, representing and interpreting. What I, what I mean to say collecting data organizing data, analyzing data, representing the results and interpreting the results for the population for which the statistical model or the statistics is used. It is a purposeful, some purposeful work will be served. So, so we, we when we talk about statistical, so that means we talk about the a population, then a sample consists of data from the population and we have some purpose in our mind, objective in our mind, we want to infer something from of the population and we collect data accordingly, we, we, we organize the data, we analyze the data, then we find the results that result we summarize and based on the summarization the key findings we infer about the population. So, that is what is the, the that is what the word is statistical is used. Now, last two are but very important one is the modeling. Modeling if you want to understand then first you understand model. 
Now, model there are many types of model actually very simple one is uh, in our school days I can remember we talk about the spring balance like this. So, what happened this is a spring a elastic one the load is attached with this the speed and it behave in some way that behavior behavior if you increase the load the elongation here will be more if you reduce it will be less. So, uh, this is a behavior this is the spring balance model. So, in order to show the behavior of the spring this type of physical model are developed. So, this is one model which is basically a physical model which is a physical model. Okay. Now, same thing when I came to my engineering studies, I found that there is one one important concept called or development or theory called Hooke's law, where that sigma the stress developed on the spring and the elongation than strain developed on it, they are uh, modeled in such a manner that there is a relationship like this and this is the range of um, elasticity there is another concept of elasticity. So, what we have I have seen there or we all have seen there that sigma varies as epsilon. So, sigma is E epsilon where E is young modulus or modulus of elasticity. So, this is what is the theory behind the for elastic behavior of elastic body when the load is so developed that each will not go to the ill point or beyond in point that in elastic zone. So, so long the body uh, is uh, stressed within the within the um, elastic uh, limit what will happen uh, the property that if you remove the load the that mean it will recover back uh, to the original position. So, this type of this development is possible because the physics of this particular issue uh, that spring is known and I ca we can say if we if I know the elast modulus of elasticity I will be able to tell the relationship between sigma and epsilon and that time in engineer in engineering mechanics and strength of material subject we learn all these things this is a mathematical model. So, in reality you will get different types of mathematical model. So, that means what I mean to say here that a physical model a mathematical model. Okay. Now, what will be the statistical model in this case? For example, you take a case I think the in the beginning of the um, I mean this particular study for example, the hooks how does uh, did he develop all those things. So, perhaps through experiment I have no idea. But suppose you do you do not know the modulus of elasticity, but you but you know that is elastic body and you want to you want to find out the relationship. In that case, you can do an experiment with sim p varying p from p 1 to p n. So, that means you will create n and different combination, then you will be getting 1 to some n observations and sigma and epsilon values you will be getting sigma 1, sigma 2 sigma n they have epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and then epsilon n. Okay. So, now if you plot this what will happen you may get a plot like this here it is sigma and epsilon. Essentially what is the difference between this and this? Here what I am saying I have straight away without I when you show have shown me this spring balance then I immediately say that is in it is elastic body if it is elastic body this is the diagram because I know the physics I have this Hooke's law is known to me. So, mathematics is known to me I am showing, but in case it is not known I have done several experiment here and based on uh, this I am trying to I am able to plot like this need not be the perfect straight line you will get when you go for empirical modeling. So, this is what is the empirical one model. So, this empirical model when you talk about empirical model or like this experiment based or data based 
models like this these are basically using statistics these are all statistical this is so for me this is your or for all of us this is our statistical model okay now um, what i what is modeling then modeling is basically you sub, you want to get this type of results it is not that uh, immediately you will get all those things there is a process a steps i have to understand what what is my purpose i have to understand in order to fulfill the purpose what are the different variables they are affecting there and i have to identify uh, all the important variables then i have to i have to see that how the data on the variable will be collected for example here i have shown you the experiment but it it may so happen that uh, that you cannot do the experiment so in that case is there any other way of collecting data for example naturalistic observation someone is interested to see, to see the behavior of a particular animal so he cannot do experiment maybe that is a wild animal but there are a large number of wild animal animals of that particular species so we can observe the behavior just just going and observing field based so okay so field based observation our this one is your um, your our um, experiment sometimes what happened we will go for some naturalistic observations naturalistic observation which which i talk about the wild animal case field based observation mean the production you go suppose the steel was a case you go to the production shop and see that what is happening there collect data and accordingly uh, you do some modeling naturalistic observations so all those uh, type of uh, data collection mechanism uh, comes under empirical uh, modeling and you have to understand all those things so there is this process the process of modeling then uh, the, the process of um, model building is called modeling the process of model building is called of model building is called modeling okay so uh, let us see some of the slides now that i told the you in uh, what is multivariate and um, what is this it is discussed why should i use it uh, it is obvious question and that why should i go for multivariate things uh, if i can do by some other way why multivariate so there are key, some key issues which basically will be known to you later on that when we talk about multivariate I, we talk about multiple variables that is p cross 1 if p is the number of variables x 1 x 2 like your x p now there is possibility that these variables are interrelated there is correlation one of the issue is correlation in between the variables so that means you may get a correlation matrix or other way it is basically the covariance between the variables or covariance by covariance what i mean to say that if one variable vary that there is a possibility that in particular way the some, or some other variable will also vary then there will be covariance and standardized covariance is correlation this issue will be discussed on in the subsequent lectures so covariance that will be a p cross p that matrix will come okay so all those things so similarly the mean mean values for all those variables mu 1 mu 2 like mu p these things will be there now so my answer to your question is that why should i use it because no physical process or as such any other systems also which is characterized by multiple variables they should be analyzed other way i can say the behavior their behavior should be analyzed taking into consideration of all the variables characterizing it when these variables considered very very important for for the design development or improvement of the system for which it is developed 
and as nano as it is obvious that there will be covariance or correlation between the variables. So, if I go for univariate analysis we will lose substantial information about the behavior because of non inclusion of the covariance structure. So, we require to control this covariance structure and in multivariate statistics covariance is a very big issue and which will be in multivariate descriptive statistics I will be discussing all those covariance things. So, it is required obviously it is required for example, for this case like our this one steel washer this case the steel washer three variables are basically controlling its quality inner diameter outer diameter and thickness and there is a chance that inner and outer diameter will be related and also uh, the thickness. So, in that case the customer will not be able to apply it or fit it to its own situation if there is huge mismatch. Now, if we control individually inner outer or diameter or thickness then what will happen the correlation structure will not be considered and ultimately you will not be able to satisfy the customer. Okay. So, you will be using multivariate uh, statistics or multivariate modeling when your system is complex in terms of number of variables it may be ill conditions like this the correlation covariance structure is intact okay. and in order to extract uh, those correlated information you want to extract the pattern from this data that is why you will be using. Okay. So, how do I do it it is through different models. So, these models will be described little later. Now, what is next? Um, next one example here we are saying that a particular company uh, operating may be in a in a city market and we want to see the uh, organizational health of this company with respect to profit in rupees million with respect to sales volume in rupees 100 absenteeism machine breakdown and M ratio. Actually, this is created intentionally first one is profit and sales volume these are the uh, organizational issue and that health if you sell more your profit may be more and if your profit is more you are healthy in financially and another issue is absenteeism if you are paying substantially and if you are taking care the well being of the employees absenteeism will be less and if you are maintaining the health of the process here we are saying machine your machine breakdown will be less and if you are if you are able to coordinate with customer uh, as well as uh, your supplier and your M ratio that marketing ratio particularly if I say marketing ratio it is related to the customer and that that will be high. So, if this is the case and then we are basically observing from April, May, June, July that uh, 12 months data and in some units you have measured and this is this is nothing but uh, a case of multivariate situation where each of the row like starting from 1 the first row these values are talking about multivariate observations for month April for similarly for second these are multivariate observations. So, there are 12 multivariate uh, observations. Okay. Now, you may be people may be interested to know how profit varies over the months then it will be univariate one if you want to say that how sales volume vary over the month it will be also univariate one if you want to know absenteeism varies over the year the months that is also univariate like this. But if you are interested to see that how the profit and sales volume co vary co vary and uh, and their own variation then you have to have to consider two variable and then this will be a multivariate situation. Sometimes you may be interested to know 
that how the sales volume will be dependent on absenteeism, uh, machine breakdown and marketing ratio and then this will be a dependent model and that is also a multivariate issue. So, this is in nutshell what I talk about multivariate observations. So, now <coughs> we, we have discussed uh, some of the things, uh, some of the variables in consideration and we have seen that we have assigned them some values, but how, how, where from those values are coming. For example, if I say that steel was uh, the thickness that may be the inner or the outer thickness. So, how it is uh, known? So, you have used some measurement scale to measure this. If I want to say that may be you have used vernier caliper to measure the outer outer diameter, you may be used vernier caliper to measure the inner diameter. So, you have used some instrument and as well as you, uh, there is a scale of measurement in this case the scale is, is basically length which may be in terms of millimeter in terms of millimeter. So, you have to use some scale of measurement and based on the scale used whatever data you get those data will be of different types. Okay. So, you see this slide here the left side is we are talking about random variables and right hand side we are talking about data types. I have explained you this random variable earlier. So, I will not spend much time here, but rather you must please understand one thing only that in random variable there will be discrete and continuous random variable. By discrete random variable we mean to say that they will take the some, some counted uh, count num values like 0, 1, 2 or something like this or January, February, March something like this. Okay. So, and uh, our uh, continuous case that profit absenteeism breakdown of what's M ratio here, what is that any value is possible. So, please understand one thing here sales volume and coming under uh, your discrete because it is a countable one, but many countable such count values can also be uh, considered uh, continuous in uh, in many situations, but anyhow. So, there are two uh, types. Now, your data types I told you that what measurement scale you are using based on this data types will be known means the data will be having certain properties because data is nothing but information how much information is available in the data getting me. So, it, it all depends on what scale you have used to measure this data. So, based on that there are four types of data one is nominal data, ordinal data, interval data and ratio data. Let us discuss something about nominal data. By definition it is provide identity to some items or things. If I say the month the company small com company the business I should have shown you that they want to know uh, over the different months what is the status. Suppose the month is a variable starting from January to December because it changes. So, then it is January and February all those things nothing but they are the identity of the period of time identity of a particular period. Suppose uh, you just think of you are you are trying to uh, trying to know the some performance or the status of the different departments uh, of uh, of for example, IIT. So, then if I say I the department of chemistry, department of physics, department of mathematics, department of computer science, department of industrial and system, industrial engineering management. So, all those things uh, they are basically providing identity, but we sometimes require this type of data in our to include in our analysis. So, this is nothing but nominal data. Now, what is the problem with nominal data? Problem with nominal data is that there is uh, huge computational limitations because you cannot do any arithmetic operation. We cannot add department of chemistry plus department of physics like this. We cannot say department of chemistry is 1 and department of physics is 2 and accordingly we will add. We cannot subtract, we cannot uh, uh, multiply, we cannot uh, make divisions also. So, this is the problem. Next data type is your ordinal data type. 
what is ordinal data type suppose you just see that you have you have you have traveled in flight several times maybe or train or some other place or you have gone to restaurants and where you have taken food and you might have seen that you are giving a feedback form they are they are asking that please uh, rate the uh, in the in case of hotel that food quality service quality room uh, room quality all those things in terms of uh, not satisfactory or uh, totally unsatisfactory Trying to uh, extremely satisfying this type of scale you have used. For example, for the uh, food case, you can say okay, taste wise it is uh, very good, good or something like this. So this type of ordering when ordering is there, uh, this is called ordinal data. Okay. So what it does, it's basically provide some order or rank to some items or things. Example service quality, it is low, medium, or good, and computational limitations. Here also, we cannot do any arithmetic operations like your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You cannot do. Then what way it is better than our nominal data? It is better than nominal data because here you are getting an order, a rank you are getting. If I if I say the performance, the my student performance is low, average, and very good, excellent like this, and the person who is getting excellent, he is definitely better than the person or the student who got very good. So I I have a ranking scheme here, I mean ranking uh, ability with this data. Okay. So, original data is rich compared to nominal data. Next data type I said that uh, interval data. What is interval data? It is uh, basically uh, well understood if I if we take this example. Here temperature, you are measuring using two scales, one is Celsius, another one is Fahrenheit. In, in, in developing these two scales, for example, Fahrenheit scale as well as your Celsius scale, the, the reference point, reference point is, is taken at two different places, means locations, it is not the same, you are getting me. So, and if you see the horizontal lines here, you see that 0 degree centigrade, 20 degree centigrade and 100 degree centigrade, then the corresponding Fahrenheit here range is 32, 70 and 212 Fahrenheit, fantastic. So, there is a range, when if I say the uh, difference from 100 to 0 degree, you are getting this range, here also the 212 to 32, the corresponding range is this. So, that means whether we measure in Celsius using Celsius scale or Fahrenheit scales, we will be getting the equal range. Now, now what will happen? Suppose I measured a temperature uh, today's temp uh, day, day temperature is 20 degree centigrade, tomorrow 30 degree, and maybe day after tomorrow again 21 degree. Then, I, if I want to do the averaging, I can add them and then divided by 3 that uh, 3 days average I will get. If I do the same thing in Fahrenheit also, it is possible I can do that similar thing I can do. But what will happen, suppose I want to say that what is the, uh, how many times temperature of today is compared to the tomorrow's uh, yesterday's temperature, then if I use Celsius scale and if I divide, suppose if 22 by 20 and then here it will be maybe 70 and some other things then you will find out that they are not matching. So, that means interval scale is some scale where you will get a interval data, a range data and they are all having all, all types of uh, continuous uh, properties except uh, and they can do uh, three arithmetic operations very quick, very easily addition, subtraction and multiplication, but when you do division you will find out that if the when they use, you change, you use the changes the scale ultimately what will happen you will find that 
they are not matching. So, in interval data, interval data you cannot go for division interval data division not possible. All other arithmetic operations possible. Let us go to the next uh, our slide that is we are talking about ratio data. Ratio data is something where where there is absolute 0 in the scale of measurement this is 0. If I move right towards right suppose x amount and towards left also x amount then the difference this difference this difference is same. If I go for y also this side also y also that is the same. So, that means if you go in uh, to the left it is negative this side it is positive, but there is absolute 0 in between. Okay, so, this 0 is the reference point not in terms of the, the Fahrenheit and centigrade scale that where is the two different reference point. So, definition is contains absolute 0 highest form of data sorry. So, ratio data is contains absolute 0 highest form of data example absenteeism breakdown hours what I have shown earlier and computational limitation in all arithmetic operations are possible here. Okay. So, now if I if I go by uh, the order of information available then definitely your first one is if it is nominal then followed by ordinal then your interval then your ratio then definitely in order of increasing information this is the this is the case. My base data is this next bet is this next best is this next and this is the lowest form of information data. Okay. So, so you know that different data types now you know that uh, as you will be applying multivariate mod statistical modeling you must require collect data. So, you require to know the data sources. So, primary data collected from the source where it is generated for example, in the case of uh, steel washers example if you collect data where uh, from the production shop uh, just going there collecting data or uh, that is what is known as and uh, primary data. Okay, suppose you want to see the behavior of the um, animals in the jungle go and observe and, and then accordingly note down and that will be your primary data. Okay. So, uh, for the um, production that city can that uh, example the profit may have come and sales volume case that is also primary data so long you are collecting from the source. What is secondary data? Secondary data stored in repository or collected by someone else getting me. So, you are uh, not collecting it is already there we have different uh, sources for example, uh, you may get the financial data from some sources and uh, suppose company is maintaining records of their production and um, suppose the maintenance. Uh, or the health of machines or many things. Okay. So, you have not collected. So, company uh, has stored and you have gone there and collected these things or it is better that in a literature you are studying uh, something in your own area and you found that a paper is there where some data is uh, given. So, this type of data is secondary, but secondary data must have must be authentic in the sense that reference of the data is available authored references are uh, there this is authored literature data, but this is definitely as, as it is done by somebody else it is not primary there you have to rely on the on the authenticity of the data collected by somebody else. Then tertiary data which is basically a common knowledge type of things ok suppose in Wikipedia you will find many things are there actually when uh, in in terms of modeling uh, modeling 
you, when you start with a subject area you you start with this that when your knowledge is not that much clear and you will start with the tertiary sources and then slowly you go to secondary source and then finally when you do actual uh, work you may will go for the primary data sources uh, i told you earlier what is model let me repeat this again that model mimics reality when if you develop a model that without considering the reality real thing you are not doing the justice so model remix reality so it should be a uh, it should have real applications that is what is the meaning for example suppose you you think of a car which is produced by suppose any automobile company and they develop they develop uh, these things what i mean to say they develop a model simulation model in computer first before before going for uh, developing the car one after another or manufacturing the car in the in the manufacturing shop what there there must be some simulation model okay and means how the car will work so that type of things are known as uh, that means it is uh, in terms of the reality is the car car is the real thing so you are modeling something so the spring balance example also uh, that the mathematics is related to the elastic behavior of that is the reality okay in statistical uh, sense when you talk about the how sales volume is dependent on uh, other things uh, like this your absenteeism m ratio all those things that also uh, going to the talk about the reality so actually in statistical sense a model talks about explain the regularity of a phenomena okay in in hooke's law the regularity is so long it is within the elastic limit uh, when the load is released it will come back to the original shape that is the regularity in case of in case of our um, statistical model building we talk about, about data and data is nothing but equal to this is pattern plus error this pattern is the regularity pattern is the regularity or systematic component systematic component okay so you we must know what is our problem and accordingly what data you have collected and uh, you want to extract pattern from this data okay in case of prediction model suppose you want to predict some uh, y value then with respect to some x values and then you will find out there is some linear combination of variables that is x beta and then plus error will be there this is my regularity or pattern this one will be the error okay now when you when you repeat sim that sim similar development under different different situations then what will happen if it, it if it performs well under uh, the different situation for which it is developed then one day we may say it's a law or a theory like hooks law or hooks uh, this hooks law is this one the elastic uh, that elasticity theory okay so we all know that uh, Newton's uh, laws of motions, and we all know that uh, Dalton's atomic theory, and many other things that these are not that one day everything is developed and uh, people accept it. It basically developed, it tested, and verified, validated after uh, several years, and then others, other scientists, other part of, uh, that is the researchers, they accepted the fact and then it was applied to different situations and found that it is working okay i told you th modeling also process of building a model physical mathematical and statistical this is i already explained to you uh, i hope uh, that you got a glimpse of uh, actually uh, the purpose uh, of uh, applied multivariate statistical modeling actually we want to develop empirical model okay those empirical models 
if these are all data based data based in the sense data driven you have data and you are you are going for model build, build you are building model and two to find out the regularity of the data or the pattern of the data and show that you will be able to able to describe the relationships of the population or the or the behavior of the population or system in in consideration you will be uh, you will be able to establish the uh, strength of the relationship you will be able to predict something you may be interested to uh, prescribe something also but when you talk about uh, statistical modeling usually this is the description and prediction part part is description explanation and prediction okay these three things comes into consideration so slowly you will be knowing different types of uh, statistical models all together and and uh, and you you will be tempted to develop different models also based on the data whatever available to you but but before um, uh, model going for modeling or applying any statistical techniques uh, what is happening uh, what we we want to say that you have to have some principles in your mind before going for this here i have just jotted down some of the principles which i have taken from a book by uh, on operation research by rabindran at all you just see what is he, he said uh, do not build a complicated model when a simple one will suffice for example suppose if i know the mean value of uh, different lots of steel over mean value of a particular characteristic for example the inner diameter of uh, different uh, your um, uh, lots produced okay and if that suffices my purpose go for mean or at max you may require the standard deviation and mean of the inner diameter produced by the different processes abc as i have told you so there you may you don't go for maybe okay that covariant structure many other things it may not be needed so you don't go if it is needed you go for be your modeling of the problem to fit the technique many a times i have seen i have seen in uh, my case it is the, there is one model which will be discussing later on known as structural equation modeling the people are using structural equation everywhere where a simple regression model can fit can be okay but people are interested to fit the structural equation model so please be a little bit of cautious all those things that you it is model is for problem solving and model comes from the problem not to fit a statistical technique the design phase of modeling must be conducted rigorously and it will be discussed later what do we mean by design phase coming under study design model should be verified prior to validation valid verification means suppose you, you when you collect data you split the data into into two halves one for your tra training another for test uh, or other way i can say one set for model building another set for verification and validation basically talks about when you take some new data again and you find it is working that is validation a model should never taken be too literally by many a times what i have found that it is their model okay there are more many variables statistics is taken very in very loose sense okay there are many variables let us find the relationship is there or not this type of or whatever variable is there let us find that uh, relationship without considering the purpose that a, a model should neither be praised to do nor criticized for falling to do that for which it was never intended for example you are interested to see the relationship between several variables of a particular population now later on you want to see that how i want to predict something see you developed a model to see the pattern and strength of relationship not to predict so why how can your model will predict which is which was not intended for so that is another issue so if it if it fails to do prediction when it was just to understand the covariant structure then you don't we should not criticize for this or we should not press the model to do it 
beware of overselling a model. Many a times we we basically make sure of uh, I can say recommendation based on the model and many of the things are basically from common sense and so that type of selling is prohibited. Some of primary benefits of modeling are associated with the process of developing the model. So, the see as all of you, of you are basically learning multivariate statistics, multivariate modeling. So, do not think that always you will be doing something great with this type of modeling, the, you are learning. So, the learning process when you develop something, you know the physics of the problem may be, you know the process through which data is generated, you know how the data to be captured, how the data to be analyzed, what techniques is applicable when. So, this is entire gamut, this gamut of process is very, very important. So, many benefits, many benefits you accrue out of it. A model cannot be any better than information that goes into it. So, you cannot say that you are using nominal data and you will be basically talking about a model of regression where y variable is nominal. So, you have to have go for some other type of model that may be your logistic regression. So, the information what you are the quality of information what is fed into that model that is more important because if the input is not good output also you should not ex expect good. So, model cannot replace decision maker getting me. So, you cannot think that you are your model is superior than you the decision maker the analyst who has having the system knowledge the domain expert. So, they they are more more important people. So, whatever you develop, whatever you do, whatever for what purpose you are developing all those things. So, that is in your brain, in, 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 in the group who are working, they know better than any model. So, in this case, what I mean, I, I want to say that you please uh, take all those issues, what I have discussed now, the, the principles particularly into, stay, into seriously and accordingly develop the model and uh, today it is up to this next cl next class we will be starting with statistical approaches to problem simply. Thank you for your patient here.